Uh, okay, next Peter speakers are Peter Smith and Akim Wusner. And uh, we are going to talk to you today about optoelectronics with uh, layered two-dimensional materials. So first of all, we would like to start off with um, what could we do with the layered structures with just the right layers. So already more than 50 years ago, the famous theoretical physicist Richard Feynman was talking about uh, what, what possibilities we have if we could engineer layers, put layers on top of each other, and um, by that engineer properties of materials. So not be limited to the properties of materials we have right now or we, we have in, in nature, but really be able to stack materials and find, find new properties and exploit them. So nowadays, this is actually reality thanks to nanotechnology. And um, these uh, this layered materials are actually used in many different uh, applications, such as uh, photodiodes, light emitting diets or solar cells. But um, even though these, these devices are already have very great pro properties, still there are some drawbacks. Some of the drawbacks are that the interfaces are very rough, which leads to, um, which leads to deterioration in the, um, in the efficiency of those devices. The layers are quite thick, and because these materials which are used are rather expensive, actually um, this leads to uh, very expensive devices. Another thing is that the growth of these materials is, is expensive, so also there, it, uh, there's pot potential price reductions if, if we would be able to make these layers thinner. Then, uh, due to their thickness, they're also very rigid and not transparent. So it would be, it would be very nice if we could have these materials tra transparent and flexible to actually use them in different form factors. So one, one, one possibility of, uh, of going thinner are actually two-dimensional materials. So back in 2004, the first two-dimensional material, graphene, was, um, was um, isolated by Andrei Geim and Kostya Novoselov. And graphene is actually a honeycomb lattice of carbon atoms, just one atom thick, which means that this is one, one million times thinner than a human hair. And th think, uh, this, this material actually has very nice electronic and optical properties. and um, it has led uh, to, uh, that its, win, uh, that its um, discoverers actually get the Nobel Prize in physics in 2010. And um, it can be isolated using graphite. Graphite, which you find, for example, in your normal pencil, is just layered graphene. So you can isolate graphene by using graphite and uh, using normal adhesive tape, like, for example, scotch tape, and peel off layers of, of graphene from, from your graphite and stick it onto your substrate. So graphene was the first two-dimensional material that was discovered, but since then, the family of two-dimensional materials has grown. And now we not only have graphene, which is uh, metal, we also have uh, other materials like hexagonal boronitride, which acts, uh, as a, um, um, which acts as a dielectric, so it's um, electrically insulating, like a glass, for example. And we also have two-dimensional semiconductors like molybdenum disulfide or tungsten diselenide. So now we have a, a really big family of different two-dimensional materials which we can stack on top of each other and really uh, come close to this dream of Richard Feynman of being able to, um, to engineer properties of, of the materials at will. And how we do this? We use a so-called stamping technique. And for this, we, uh, we have a stamp made of a polymer, which you can see in red on this slide. And on this polymer, we, we, uh, we put a we put this boronitride, so this insulator, and we can now pick up graphene from, from a substrate, and we can repeat this process. So we can not only pick up graphene, we can pick up many of these, uh, of these materials. And in, in the case on the bottom right, we, for example, started off with boronitride. We picked up a layer of graphene. Then we picked up a layer of uh, tungsten diselenide. We picked up a, another layer of graphene, and we we put this stack onto our substrate and we created our device about which Peter is going to talk now. 
Exactly. I'm, I'm going to talk about the device you can see here on the bottom right. And as we will see in a minute, this is actually a solar cell. Um, so here on the right side, you can see an optical image under the, under the optical microscope of the device. And to the left side, uh, you see a schematics of the device. Uh, so I will guide you through the optical image on the right side. So what you cannot, uh, what you cannot see here very clearly on, on this projector, but it is indicated for, uh, for clarity with the dashed lines, are the two graphene sheets. And we have one graphene sheet, as you can see on the schematics. We have one graphene sheet at the bottom and one graphene sheet at, at the top of our structure. And in between, we have the semiconductor, which in our case is tungsten diselenide. So, and the tungsten diselenide, you can see on the right side, which is surrounded by the, by the black solid line. And in the case for this device that you can see here on the right, the semiconductor is only um, three layers, which means nine atoms thick. And the, the area in yellow, where all the three layers overlap, this is called the active area, and this is where the physics happen. Uh, so, and the active area is about 10 by 10 micrometer big in size. So, um, yeah, I will, I will now show, show you a typical measurement that we do on the device. So we measure typically the optoelectronic response. That means we focus a laser on the device. This is called, uh, this is the optical part of the measurement. And then we measure the current between the two graphene sheets. And this is called, uh, this is the electronic part of the device. And together, this is an optoelectronic measurement. And because our devices are also very small and very thin, our group is called the nano optoelectronics group. And now we can vary different parameters, like for example, the laser color, the laser power, the temperature between minus 250 and about 50 degrees Celsius, the voltages we apply, and many other different things that I don't want to go into detail now. And very important, we can also move the sample in, uh, in position. And like this, we can create spatial photocurrent maps with a precision of less than one micrometer. And this is one measurement I want to show you here. This is a spatial photocurrent map, which means the electronic response we measured when shining a laser, uh, depending on the position. And the yellow area indicates the highest electronic response, the highest photocurrent. And Comparing this to an optical image, you can actually see that this is, corresponds to the active layer where all the three regions overlap. And so comparing this to, to simulations and varying different parameters, we find that the photovoltaic effect is responsible for this, uh, for this, uh, for this response, the photovoltaic effect that you find in every solar cell. Uh, that means light is absorbed inside the semiconductor and the current uh, gets, uh, uh, gets transferred to the graphene. So this is actually, this, um, this is actually, this schematic actually has the, the correct um, number of layers. So if you count the layers here, these are nine layers in the semiconductor, two layers at the top and bottom. So altogether, this device is only nine layers thick and nine atomic layers. And this makes it the world's thinnest solar cell that we have created and which is flexible and semi-transparent. Okay, thank you very much for your attention. So this is the group uh, and I want to especially thank Professor Frank Coppens for, for giving us the time to be here. Thank you very much.